Now, in this lecture, we're going to understand what is hooks and how we can use it in React application. So, what is hooks? Hooks are the function which hook into. Or you can say, a hook is a special function that lets you to hook into React features. Hook are a new feature introduced in React 16.8 version. React hooks enable us to write React application with only functional component. Thus, there is no need to use class component anymore. In the previous lecture, we understand how we can work with use state hook. In this lecture, we're going to compare two examples of a simple state. In the first example, we put a state inside a functional component. And in the second example, we put a state inside a class component. And then we're going to compare both that example. So let me first create my first example where I'm going to count a number when we click on the button. So I'm going to create this example using a function. So inside these components, I'm going to create a new file and name this file count.js. And inside this file, I'm going to create my functional component. To do that, I'm going to simply use react functional component. When I press enter, I'm going to have my react functional component here. Inside this div, I'm going to first specify here a class name to this div which is app, then I'm going to just specify here paragraph and here I'm going to say you clicked and then pass here curly braces to add a variable and then I'm going to say here times. Just down here, I'm going to create a button and inside it, I'm going to say click me. Just out of that, as you know, to create a state inside your functional component, you need use state hook. So you need to first import that hook into your file and then use it. So as you know, to use use state, you need to first get the React object and then call use state, just like this. Or you can just import that right here using curly braces, just like this, use state. And now you can remove this React from this use state. So let me just create here a simple state. So I'm gonna say here constant in the array I'm going to destructure all the variables inside this array and then I'm going to say here use state and pass your initial value 0. Just out of that inside this array I'm going to first specify variable count. This is the initial value of the state. Then I'm going to change this value using a function set count. You can specify any name to these variables that's upon you. And then I'm going to simply pass this count inside this curly braces. So I can print this value of this count here inside this paragraph. Just out of that, let me create a click event to this button. So I'm going to say here on click is equal to and in the curly braces, I'm going to pass an handler function. So here I'm going to pass an arrow function just like this. Instead of creating a new function for this on click event, I'm going to create inline function here. So I'm going to use here arrow function and then I'm going to say set count in the parenthesis. I'm going to pass a value to this count variable. So I'm going to say here count plus one. So when I click on this button, I want to increase the value of this count by one. So this handler function is going to first get the value of this count and then increase it by one. Now let me save the changes and show you the result first. So let me back to the index.js and let me import here count. Let me copy this, paste it here and here. Save the changes. When I open my browser, as you can see, I'm going to have here, you click zero times. The initial value of this count variable is right now zero. But when I click on this click me button, it's going to increase this value by one. Let me show you. If I click on this click me, you can see. When I click on this click me button, it's going to increase the count value by one. That's upon you. You can change this count value and increase it by two, four and five as well. That's upon you. Now let me create the same example with class component. On the left hand side, I have this example in the functional component and on the right hand side right here, I have the same example with class component. Let me compare both these examples. You can notice here, we start with a function keyword to create a functional component and to create a class component, we start with a class keyword. In the constructor, we declare the state. In the function, we use use state hook to create a state. There is a big difference between both these examples you can notice here. We use here constructor to create this state and we use here use state to create a new state for this component. And in the return statement, we have the JSX with a paragraph and a button. The set count is going to update the value of this state variable. But in the class component, we use set state method to update the value of the state. 
if you compare both these examples, then you can notice the stateful functional component is easier and more effective than the class component. Because in the class component, the constructor for the React component is called before it is mounted. When implementing the constructor for a React component subclass, you should call a super property before any other statement. Otherwise, this dot prop will be undefined in the constructor, which can be lead to a bug. So there are many things you need to consider when creating a class component in React. And another thing is, in the class component, we use component did mount React lifecycle hook. But in the functional component, we have the better options. Using use effect hook, we can use component did mount lifecycle hook. If you don't know what is component did mount, then I have a dedicated video on it. You can check that video in the description of this video. There are many pros and cons in both these styles. But I would like to conclude that functional component are taking over a modern React in the foreseeable future. So I would like to use the functional component when I create my React application.